The tale commences with an introduction to an upscale eatery bustling with patrons enjoying their meals. However, it swiftly unveils itself as an auction site where the attendees bid on enslaved individuals. For the subsequent contender, a stunning girl with silver hair is presented. As the bidding ensues, she displays a determined demeanor and summons a key, employing it to liberate herself. Progressing further, she conjures a weapon to fend off the bidders. Meanwhile, the attendant in the waiting area unveils herself as an accomplice, utilizing her lethal abilities to effortlessly overcome the guards. Inside the grand hall, Daya continues her rampage until a man overpowers her. It dawns upon her that he possesses magical abilities, but her partner Tart arrives just in time to provide assistance. As they find themselves surrounded, Tart creates a diversion, granting her comrade an opportunity to recite a spell, which she employs to demolish the entire venue. Outside, they are joined by Maha, their lookout, and Lug, their leader, who stand ready to tidy up the aftermath. As the establishment's owner attempts to flee, Lug eliminates her. Subsequently, we are transported to a contemporary world where a man carries out an assassination operation alongside his assistant. When she questions the rationale behind not eliminating the entire gang, he elucidates that they must strictly adhere to their given orders. As they prepare to depart, he notices they have been detected, prompting them to hastily seek refuge in their vehicle. Pursued by their assailants, they retaliate with gunfire, finding themselves under reciprocal attack, resulting in their vehicle exploding. However, this turn of events was all part of their plan, as they had arranged the vehicle to detonate and made their escape while being pursued. While resting on the ground, the man discloses his upbringing and lifelong occupation as an assassin, emphasizing it as his sole purpose in life. He clarifies that the only reason he brought his inexperienced partner into the field is due to orders requiring him to train her. In response, she asserts her competence, prompting the man to aim a firearm directly at her revealing that it is, in fact, her own gun that he had discreetly disarmed. He admonishes her, highlighting that only a novice would be unsuspecting enough to have their weapon confiscated, even by a trusted partner. As they resume their respite, the girl endeavors to threaten him with the gun. However, unbeknownst to her, he had already unloaded it, rendering her efforts futile. The following morning, their superiors extend congratulations for his final mission before retirement. Their counterfeit passports and plane tickets have already been arranged. During the flight, the plane is abruptly jolted, and they are notified of a hijacking by robbers. But in truth, the man is well aware that it is a scheme devised to assassinate him. He maneuvers his way to the cockpit to take control of the descending plane. As he rouses, he observes a fighter jet launching missiles, obliterating everything in its path. As his life fades away, he is abruptly transported to an alternate dimension. In this parallel realm, he encounters a divine being who reveals that he is to be reborn into a fantastical world. The deity explains that he can choose to retain all his memories upon reincarnation, but at the cost of an important task, to eliminate the world's hero. The goddess elucidates that the hero, 18 years after his own rebirth, will bring about the world's destruction, necessitating his demise while still 16 years old. With this knowledge, she introduces him to an assortment of skills from which he can select allowing him to favor those that suit him best. Subsequently, he is thrust into the new world, reborn into the esteemed Tatha de family. His father, naming him Lug, designates him as the family's heir. At the tender age of seven, Lug, driven by his goal, has already commenced training in the woods. He refrains from having his mother, Yesari, prepare the rabbits he hunts, as he desires to cultivate his physique through a proper diet, based on his past life's experiences. Later, Lug enters a clandestine chamber where his father inspects his body, assuming various forms, as is their family's tradition. Publicly renowned as the most prestigious medical lineage in the land, they secretly operate as an assassination clan, executing orders exclusively from the royal family to bring retribution upon nobles who seek to harm the nation. Following the examination, his father declares that the time has come for Lug to undergo the family's surgical procedure. This eye modification grants enhanced eyesight, the ability to perceive mana, and night vision. After the surgery, Lug's adoring mother lavishes him with affection. Although he finds her doting nature less than thrilling, he tolerates it. Subsequently, his bandages are removed, revealing his augmented vision, allowing him to behold the vast expanse of his family's domain and its inhabitants from afar. Later, Lug dons a female guise to welcome his new magical instructor, as per custom. To his astonishment, 
his teacher is a child. Noting Lug's perception of her as a child, she decides to astound him by gratuitously demonstrating high-level magic. Introducing herself as Dia Vikan, she informs Lug that she will be his tutor for two weeks, presenting him with a manastoring far stone. To assess his capabilities, she instructs him to infuse the stone with his mana. It initiates radiating, yet Lug begins to exceed the limits. She panics as his mana levels prove to be abnormal. This causes the stone to fracture, prompting her to urgently instruct him to discard it. Shortly after, the stone detonates, unleashing a tremendous impact on the surroundings. Upon Shaun and ESRI's arrival at the scene, Dia attempts to shoulder the blame, assuming they would be upset with Lug. However, their reaction is quite the opposite, as they express immense pride in his extraordinary abilities upon learning that he caused the explosion. The following day, she employs the far stone to determine his magical attribute. When he infuses it with mana, she tests for fire, which proves successful. Next, she tests for water, and it too works. Although taken aback, she proceeds to test for earth, and he exhibits a positive response. Subsequently, she attempts wind, revealing that Lug possesses four magical attributes. Under Dia's guidance, Lug embarks on his mana training, delving into a state where she facilitates his connection with his mana. Afterwards, a new spell materializes in his mind, but when Dia instructs him to recite it, he finds himself unable to decipher the words. Consequently, she provides him with an example of a spell, prompting Lug to mimic it, albeit with some difficulty enunciating the words correctly. As Lug commences practicing the spell, Dia commends his progress. Lug proposes attempting to cast the spell transcribed by her, and to their surprise, it proves successful. Armed with this newfound knowledge, they delve into crafting a spell to conjure gold, yet when Dia attempts to cast it, she is left drained. Determined, Lug decides to give it a try himself, resulting in success. Subsequently, Lug achieves success in conjuring a rifle using a trick. Dia effortlessly replicates the spells he transcribes. Next, he fashions a cannon, which, upon being fired, triggers a massive explosion that unsettles diameter. During the night, Dia reveals that their two-week period has unfortunately reached its conclusion. As a token of their friendship, Lug forges a special alloy blade, which he presents to her. In return, Dia offers him her cherished magic stone as a gesture of gratitude. Later, Shaun, Lug's father, escorts him to a penitentiary, where he imparts lessons on the art of killing. He then leads Lug to a chamber where he is to carry out his inaugural execution. The inmate pleads for mercy, prompting Shaun to list her crimes, to which she offers feeble justifications. When Lug inflicts a minor injury upon her, she alters her tune, unleashing a torrent of profanities. Thus, he concludes her life. Elsewhere, an abandoned child collapses, forsaken by her impoverished parents. Struggling desperately to survive, she attracts the attention of a wolf pack. In the town, Lug and his parents engage warmly with the inhabitants of their realm, fostering love and connection. Meanwhile, Lug seeks individuals with strong mana compatibility, but his search leads him to encounter an elderly man. Later, he expands his quest for a capable assistant skilled in mana. Several weeks pass, and while embarking on a hunting expedition, he traces the presence of a wolf pack only to discover them encircling a young girl. Acting swiftly, he steps forward to defend her. On the ground, he meticulously eliminates each wolf, ensuring their swift demise. Recognizing her hunger, Lug treats her to a meal. In exchange for her unwavering assistance, Lug strikes a deal to take her under his wing. Accepting the offer, she introduces herself as Tart so Lug warmly welcomes her. Meanwhile, it is revealed that the goddess had summoned an elite special forces unit as a reincarnate to vanquish the hero. When she assesses his progress, she discovers that he has become a neat with no intention of becoming a warrior. Several years later, Tart, now 12 years old, dutifully serves Lug as his master. In the training chamber, Tart disrobes, allowing Solug to scrutinize her form in various poses. Lug has diligently molded her into a flawless assistant, primarily serving his own interests. He acknowledges that her sole flaw is her limited proficiency with a spear. Upon attempting to train with a knife, her skills prove lacking, prompting Lug to intervene and halt her practice. Accepting her inability to wield a knife, he conjures a collapsible spear for her. Equipped with this weapon, her combat prowess experiences a significant boost. By studying the one he received from Dia, Lug begins storing far stones imbued with mana, intending to utilize them as weapons. 
Later, Shaun discloses that it is time for Lug's final assessment before he is recognized as a fully-fledged assassin. For this trial, Lug must face his father in combat. Thus commences the assassination test in the woods as the two assassins finally cross paths engaging in a fierce clash. Lug's leg is crushed by his father, compelling him to swiftly retreat and tend to his wounds. Despite possessing assassination skills from two lifetimes, Shaun ensnares him in a trap, which serves as a diversion for an ambush from behind. Lug narrowly manages to evade the attack. The duel continues, with their blades colliding, but Shaun once again vanishes into the shadows. Lug opts to lure him in, and within a brief span, Shaun launches an attack from the right, followed by another from the left after a calculated interval. However, Lug perceives through the ruse, allowing him to descend from above and swiftly end the fight, emerging as the victor. With the battle concluded, Shaun embarks on an assassination mission, accompanied by Lug. They work in unison, eliminating various nobles using diverse methods. His father unveils the next phase of Lug's advancement, constructing a false identity as a merchant who can gain access to affluent nobility. Assuming the persona of Illig Bela, Lug undergoes two years of training as the son of the merchant family. During his Senfort party, Rana from the branch family creates a disturbance, objecting to Lug, who is younger, inheriting the family leadership. Rana claims superiority and Shaun negotiates an agreement, stating that Rana will recognize Lug if he triumphs in a duel. When they are commanded to fight, Lug gains the upper hand over Rana before he can react. Despite the battle's conclusion, Rana remains dissatisfied and retaliates, effortlessly incapacitating Rana by twisting him and fracturing his arm. Outside, Lug eases Rana's embarrassment by revealing that he defeated Rana's father as well. Lug then presents Rana with a sword and proposes a future alliance. Lug, now known as Illig, resides in Miltu alongside Tart, disguising his appearance by dyeing his hair. In the town, a girl named Maha works as a tour guide with her friends, striving to earn money for survival. Unfortunately, their earnings are hampered by rainfall, limiting their income. While seeking refuge, a group of thugs arrives aiming to capture them. Maha employs her mana to create an opportunity for her friends to escape. Despite their efforts, the desperate men manage to apprehend them all. The captives are taken to an orphanage under the supervision of a man named Torin. Inside, they reunite with other captured children and receive meager supplies to sustain them for a week. In the orphanage, they are subjected to menial tasks such as laundry and sewing, enduring severe beatings for any misbehavior or complaints. In a turn of events, a nobleman arrives at the orphanage and hands money to the men. Maha is forced to bathe and dress up her friend Ifa in fine attire before she departs with the nobleman. Subsequently, the girls are subjected to nightly exploitation by men until their spirits are broken. One night, Noin reaches her breaking point and vents her frustration by self-harm. Years later, Maha overhears the owners plotting to exploit her as she has reached maturity. Filled with desperation, she flees to a secluded location. There, she contemplates self-harm, but Lug intervenes, preventing her from proceeding. The girls are introduced to Lug, who is visiting as Illig, and he chooses to purchase Maha. After completing the transaction, Torin reveals that Lug can take her after three days, as he intends to manipulate her during that time. Under the cover of darkness, Torin escorts her to serve one of his customers for the day, but driven by desperation, Maha jumps out of the carriage. She begins fleeing, but Torin's subordinate apprehends her, aided by Mana. As she is recaptured, Lug arrives in the nick of time to rescue her, and an enraged Torin commands his subordinate to capture both of them for sale. However, Lug effortlessly overpowers the man who attacked him and proceeds to intimidate Torin. Several days later, Mr. Lug's assumed father presents him with a shop to commence his trading venture. At home, Tart, whom Lug has adopted as his sister, serves him dinner. During the meal, Lug discloses his plan to sell cosmetics and confections in his new shop. These products will allow him to establish connections with the nobility, as they hold an affinity for such items. The following day, Lug shares his shop plans with his adoptive parents. Despite Mrs. Bela's initial dislike towards him, assuming Lug to be an illegitimate child, he changes her perception by presenting a moisturizer he has developed. When she applies the moisturizer and her makeup flawlessly adheres to it, she approves of the product, altering her opinion of Lug. A few days later, the cosmetic shop is revealed to be named Orna. With the moisturizer drawing numerous customers, Lug hires Maha's friends as shop attendants. At night, 
Lug prepares for potential kidnappers dispatched by rival companies, but Tart takes the initiative and beats him to it. Together, they methodically extract information from the assassin until he breaks. Some days later, Lug visits Daya in her mansion, where they collaborate on inventing and transcribing spells while enjoying each other's company for the remainder of the day. As Lug relaxes near his shop, he acknowledges that his time as a leg bela will soon draw to a close, though he has successfully assimilated into high society due to his cosmetic business. Lug subsequently appoints Maha as the assistant manager and hands over the company to her. The workers bid Lug farewell and offer him a parting gift as a gesture of goodwill. While Lug and Tart journey back home, he senses danger outside the carriage, which proves to be a pack of wolf monsters. They instruct the other travelers to take cover, and Tart takes the initiative, readying herself for battle. With a single strike, she eliminates one wolf and employs wind magic to dispatch the second. The third wolf attempts to flee, but she hurls her spare weapon at it. After the skirmish, Lug surmises that the hero will soon emerge as sightings of monsters increase. Upon arriving home, Lug is warmly greeted by his loving and beautiful mother. When he encounters his father in the study, Lug reveals his desire to marry Daya someday, prompting his father's surprised laughter. Subsequently, Lug is assigned his first solo mission as a fully-fledged assassin to eliminate a villainous count. At home, Maha provides information about their target, who serves as the mastermind behind the distribution of a dangerous drug called Visine. Later, they receive an invitation to a gathering organized by the Mark. At the event, all the ladies are thrilled as Lug showcases his new merchandise under his merchant disguise. He rendezvous with the Count, who takes a liking to him for bringing items that bring happiness to his wife. A few days later, Lug arrives at the mansion alongside Tart to carry out the assassination. Utilizing his enhanced vision and rifle, he snipes the Count from a distance. Subsequently, Maha discloses that she has located the sacred artifact he requested, which turns out to be a magical spear named Jibok. However, it is currently in the possession of a man named Setanti Magnus, who is presumed to be the hero. Moreover, she reveals that a civil war has erupted in Daya's kingdom, with her family being compelled to join the conflict. The troubling aspect is that the hero fights on the opposing side. The following day, Lug visits Daya, but she puts up a brave front, assuring him that he needn't worry. They decide to embark on a date, prompting Daya to dye her hair to match Lug's. Later, they enjoy a meal together, with Daya commenting on the superior taste of Lug's cooking compared to that of restaurants. After their date, as Lug makes his way back home, it is unveiled that the townspeople, who appeared to be ordinary civilians, were actually soldiers staging a final spectacle for Daya before she heads off to war. Upon arriving home, Lug discovers an injured man being tended to by Shaun. Shaun informs Lug that the man is a client who has enlisted his services. He further reveals his request for Lug to carry out the assassination, with the target being Daya Vekin. Witnessing Lug's shock, Shaun states that he can decline the job, but Lug has some inquiries. When Lug questions their interference in another country's affairs, Shaun explains that certain nobles are targeting Daya due to her noble lineage and knowledge of magic, as House Vekin lost the war. Daya has agreed to this arrangement in hopes of ending further bloodshed, but the townspeople have formed a rebel army to resist. Shaun adds that the actual client is Daya's father, and what he truly desires is for Lug to fake killing Daya, as that is the only way to ensure her safety. Lug ultimately accepts the assignment and sets out with Tart, who decides to employ her mana to transport him part of the way, conserving his own for combat. However, her wind magic dissipates due to mana depletion, compelling Lug to continue the journey alone, leaving behind a tearful Tart. Lug reaches the battleground where the Vekin mansion is surrounded by enemy forces eight times larger than their own. Upon observation, Lug initiates the process of eliminating the commanders one by one through sniping, leading the enemy army to become cautious and retaliate. By attaching distant stones to arrows, Lug triggers powerful explosions within the enemy camp, boosting the morale of the Vekin forces who fight back with renewed vigor. Utilizing sound detection, Lug searches for an opportune moment to infiltrate the mansion. On the opposite side, Lug reunites with Daya. Subsequently, Daya's father, Dimmer Vekin, introduces himself. As they strategize for the future, Lug plants the body of a deceased girl to stage Daya's fake death. He instructs her to shout through the window before executing the plan. However, as she moves and opens the window, Lug senses a looming danger of impending death. In that critical moment, 
he swiftly saves Daya from harm as Jibalg wreaks havoc on the battlefield. When Lug catches sight of the hero, who possesses immense mana, he swiftly conjures a cannon and fires it at him. The impact creates a massive explosion, yet the hero quickly recovers, brimming with excitement for further confrontation. The hero activates his berserk skill, enhancing his already overwhelming strength, and proposes a duel as a trade-off. He promises not to harm anyone else, prompting Lug to accept the challenge. Though Daya is apprehensive for his safety, Lug reassures her that he will fight as an assassin rather than a knight. Together with Dimmer, Lug negotiates the terms and conditions for the duel, compelling the hero to pledge the withdrawal of his forces if he is defeated. With the arrangements settled, Lug buys time by engaging the hero in trivial conversation. As the hero prepares his weapon for battle, Lug suggests commencing the duel upon the coin's descent after he tosses it into the air. However, just before it lands, an explosion occurs. Lug reveals that he had launched a missile into space prior to the duel, carefully planning its trajectory using the coin. The resulting blast is so immense that it nearly claims Lug's life, despite his casting. Following the intense battle, Lug returns home accompanied by Daya. And with that, the anime concludes. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to stay updated on future videos. Until next time, take care.